Good evening and welcome to Millennium Stage. And now, please welcome to the stage, Jeanette McCune. Good evening, everybody. Um, my colleague just mentioned, my name's Jeanette McCune. I'm the director of DC School and Community Initiatives at the, in the Education Division here at the Kennedy Center. And in collaboration with Performing Arts for Everyone, Millennium Stage, we are delighted to host tonight's Louder Than a Bomb Festival. And I'm so excited to also get to be one of the adjudicators. Louder Than a Bomb and Split This Rock really are stalwarts of this community creating and supporting young, woke, activist, artist, scholars. And we are delighted to be able to, co to collaborate with Split This Rock on a regular basis. So get ready for a night of learning, get ready for a, li a night of outstanding poetry, and please welcome Mr. Joseph Green, director for the Split, the Rock, Split This Rock program and Louder Than a Bomb. It's the North Cat, baby, I'm a boss. Carolina barbecue sauce with the safe, the cellar and the vault. I'm the best, the effect, and the cause. I'm the law. It's the North Cat, baby. I'm a boss. Kennedy Center. Carolina Barbecue Sauce. Millennium Stage. L-Tab DMV 2017. How y'all doing tonight? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to be honest with you. That was a little lackluster. I know we're in the Kennedy Center, and I know there are going to be people in here tonight at some point in time that are going to be wearing their best clothes and coming in in, like, limousines and stuff, but this is not that, not right now. Right now, we're going to need to act out just a little bit. So I'm going to ask y'all one more time how you doing tonight, and I'm going to need y'all to make some noise that everybody in this building can hear. LTAB DMV 2017, here at the Kennedy Center Millennium Stage, the finals, make some noise! My name is Joseph Green, and I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator at Split This Rock, and I'm here to uh, thank a whole bunch of people and then bring on your host who will be guiding you through this an amazing event. Um, I would like to start by thanking the woman that was just up here. Um, things like this just don't happen. Uh, people have to have uh, vision. They have to kind of you know, get in front of people who don't have the same idea about what's going to happen in these spaces, and they have to take a risk. And so Jeanette has been taking a risk on us for a couple of years now, and I think that we have finally arrived at a place where we can put on a show to thank her for all the work that she's done. But right now, can we give her and everybody on this Kennedy Center staff a warm round of applause for making this possible? I would also like to take a moment to thank uh, Pages and Alicia from Bus Boards and Poets, Dwayne B from Whitman Walker Health, and the entire staff at Split This Rock. Now, you see all these people in here, and in a second I'm gonna read some of the programs that we're doing. I want you to pay very close attention to the names I'm about to say because these five or six people are the people that are making all of this happen. So wait until the end and then let's give them all of a round of applause. Uh, there's Chelsea. There's Tiana, there's Kamisha, there's Simone, there's Brian Hannon, and there is Sarah Browning. Can we please make a loud round of applause for all of those people? And next, there are six very important people. I'm not gonna call out all of their names, but if they're in the house, I would love for them to stand up. So we have teaching artists that go out into the community and work well beyond what we are able to pay them for the services that they provide because they love what they're doing and they love the young people that they are serving. If you are a teaching artist for Split This Rock, can you please stand up right now and get a round of applause? And then, and then, there are those who do this just for the love. They teach eight to 10 hours a day and then stay after school once a week to make sure that our young people have an opportunity and a space to express themselves. If you are a teacher or a sponsor for one of our clubs, can you please stand up right now and get the loudest round of applause? Thank you for all that you do. And now, I just wanna tell you a little bit about the youth programs that split this rock. We don't often have an opportunity with an audience this big being live streamed throughout the world. So I just want y'all to know some of the things that we've done this year. Uh, this year, uh, for the first time, we were able to give out, if you add the Hyper Bowl 
If you add the Split This Rock and Napa Inspire uh, scholarship, if you add together uh, the Hayfield Split This Rock scholarships that are going out next week, we were able to give $2,000 away this year for college scholarships for young people throughout the DMV. We have 25 after-school creative writing programs throughout the area. There's the DCU Slam Team, three stars. That will be traveling to San Francisco this year, yes. We have the Ushindi Performance Tribe, which is an apprenticeship program of young people who have graduated from our programs, who have done so many wonderful things this year, not the least here at the Kennedy Center opening up for Common. That was a big deal for a lot of them. Um, we have the Inspire Scholarship with the National Fair Housing Alliance. We had the Hyper Bowl, which had the largest amount of young people participating in all five years of the Hyper Bowl. And we have LTAB DMV right here at the Kennedy Center with probably the largest crowd that we've had in the audience at a finals ever. So we've done a lot this year, and we've done it with those six people. And I just want to give this moment to all of you that have supported us through this process. So right now, for you being here and have, having been at all the events that we've done this year, can we please have a round of applause for the poetry and the young people and the stories and the lives and everything that we've done this year? Because we couldn't have done it without you guys. And then that's it for me. As you can tell, my voice is going really quickly. So I've employed a really good friend of mine, a member of the Ushindi Performance Tribe, uh, you may know him. He's pretty, you know, pretty much a big deal around these parts. To host this slam, please put your hands together for Kosi. Fat cat, who you thought it was supposed to be? You got a hot single, not your ass over three. Yo, 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 what's up? What's up, Kennedy Center? Hi, friends. How you doing? My name is Kosi Dunn, and I have the esteemed pleasure to be the captain of this ship that we're going to be riding on. Is that cool? If you're ready to go on a fantastic voyage, say yeah. yeah. Say mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look to your left right now and say neighbor. neighbor. You look good. <laughs> look to your right right now and say neighbor. neighbor. You look real good. Phantasmagorical. I'm glad y'all got acquainted with your, the people around you in your area. Y'all are all responsible for yourselves as long as I'm responsible for this show. And we're going to keep it rocking throughout the evening. Is that cool? Say, yup. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to test out these mics right quick and do the beautiful spiel that they gave me on this fancy clipboard. Is that cool? Yeah. Cool. This is what the mic sounds like real, real, real close and personal. This is what the mic sounds like from right here, projecting and whatnot. Good evening. Today is May 13th, and this is the 2017 Louder Than a Bomb DMV Teen Poetry Slam Festival. As you know, my name is Kosi, and I will be your MC for this evening. Louder Than a Bomb was started in 2001 by Chicago based poets Kevin Koval and Anna West. What started with a couple of teams has now blossomed into the largest youth poetry slam in the world. World, 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 world. Poets have three minutes to present their original work. The judges will then score the piece anywhere from zero to 10, evaluating such qualities as performance content and originality. Woo, thank you so much for grabbing my mic. We've got mad mics right here. You get a mic, you get a mic, you get a mic. So, a zero poem would be a poem that hurts your feelings. But not just hurt your feelings, it hurt like Earth's feelings. You know what I'm saying? A poem that just tastes bad in the mouth. A 10 poem is a poem that changed your life, did your taxes, and gave you a refreshing glass of water. We will have uh, no cursing, no racist, homophobic, sexist, or any other hate speech allowed in this space, particularly this evening. Points will be deducted if these rules are broken, and points are also 
deducted for violating the time-space continuum. Three minute time limits and one minute and 30 second time limit for the lightning round that I will be talking about later. After we did the time, after we got the poem out the way, we will have the judges, who are right here that I'll introduce in one moment, they'll be putting up their scores. The high and low scores of each performance are tossed out the window, and three of the middle three poems uh, scores are added, giving the performer their total score. We ask the judges to remain unswayed by the audience. You are all professionals, y'all are all fly, y'all been here around these streets before. Stay unswayed. These riffraff over there behind you, they don't know what they're talking about. Hi friends, what's up audience? We're gonna pretend like the judges aren't here right now, okay? Do, do your judge things. These are complete strangers. We have no idea who they are. Please, 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 I beseech you, sway the judges. If you hear something you like, what would you do? Oh yeah, you're gonna make some noise like that? Perhaps, you know what I'm saying, you may want to snap if you like something you hear. Mayhaps you want to, you know what I'm saying, give them that sweet chocolate noise, you know that. Mm. Or, if you're hip and happening, the young folk around these streets, they do a, a, an awkward, is it, it's not an awkward centipede, it's not an awkward swiper, it's an awkward giraffe. Yeah, 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 so if you're just totally moved and you can't speak words or sentences and or sounds, you can just throw up this in solidarity and we'll all feel and pick up what you're putting down. Is that cool? So, y'all know what to do. The judges, y'all won't know what to do. Let me introduce your pretty faces. So, we have our first judge coming from the DC Public Library system whose favorite poet is Ainsley Burroughs, so you have fantastic taste. LC! Hi, LC. How's it going? From Bishop Ireton, whose favorite poet is, uh, you may have heard of him, Shakespeare. Please make some noise for Sarah Young! Hailing all the way from PG County, by way of NYU, please make some noise for Bobby Johnson! George Washington University sophomore and, uh, and Denez Smith poet liker. That was a weird sentence, but they like Denez Smith. I also like Denez Smith. Uh, make some noise for Andrew! And last but not least, they said their favorite poet was Nikki Giovanni. We, somebody spit ego tripping right now. Um, a Kennedy Center education, uh, well, the Kennedy Center member, uh, please make some noise for Jeanette, who you just saw on stage. Hi, where'd you get there? You comfortable? You feeling good? You excited? I'm also really excited, if you couldn't tell. You can't, can you tell if I'm excited? I'm actually really, really excited to have one of my favorite DJs in the area, DJ Double A 1K, behind me spinning on the proverbial ones and twos. Can we make some noise? My man is not only an audio DJ, but he's out here with this multimedia action. You know what I'm saying? He got y'all with all those videos earlier, and I just thought that was lit. So please, please, please show some love to the DJ one more time. DJ Double A 1K. There's multiple ways to show love, right? This is a friendly and supportive environment, right? We show love at all times, always, belligerently. If you hear a score that you may not like, do you have an example of something that you would like to say? No, boo is not what you would say. What'd you say? Fantastic, just encourage active listening. Perhaps there was something stuck in the judge's ear at that moment and now they'll be a little bit more vigilant. Awesome, this is a friendly and supportive environment. If you so feel moved to contact people via the interwebs or the outer webs, you can use the hashtag LTABDMV2017. 
Or you can at DCU Slam or at Split This Rock and talk about how much of a great time you're having. You should tell someone to tune into the live stream at the Kennedy Center's website or just tell your mans, you know what I'm saying, on your snappy chats and your instant grams and show them how much of a blast you're having. Okay? I got all my rules out the way. Y'all know to get some t-shirts, really, really fly t-shirts. And you want to start this poetry slam, say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. yeah. Too bad. Sorry. You got to do some important business real quick, DJ. Before we start this slam, we must spill blood. That means we need a calibration poet. You can hit it one more time, DJ. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, so the calibration poet will be coming up, acting as a competitor. This will be your baseline, judges. You're gonna use this poem, and you're gonna keep that as your median throughout the day. You have a poem that you feel is stronger, you'll score higher. If you have a poem that may need a little bit more work, you're gonna score lower. Is that cool? Fantastic, you're gonna show all this love. This is the first poet, the first youth poet coming to the stage right now. Start making some noise. Way from Wakefield High School, Mark Mayo! <sighs> nope. Too tall for that. All right, thanks. <clears throat> this is for you, Dad. Thanks. For all the things you didn't do, all the times you weren't there, all the lessons I learned in your absence. When you were the teacher, I always had perfect attendance, but you never came to class. Lesson plans of, I'll come pick you up on Friday and just wait, I'll be there soon, followed by looks towards the door, every passing shadow crawling towards the realization. She weren't coming that day, or the next day, or any day. Thanks for calling and saying, sorry, son, not today, telling me that class was canceled. Where was love in your curriculum? I don't remember ever getting a lesson on what it was, at least not from you. Mama calling substitutes for you. The lessons on love are something I would never need notes for. Their teachings are all over my body. Pain that never left even after the beatings ended. I have love tattooed all over me. I'll never forget what it is. Thanks for not being there for my first birthday. I don't even remember that. Just like you don't even remember to call on my birthday. Just like you don't remember to pay child support. Just like you don't even remember that time you finally did call. Drunk, saying that you hate me, that my birth was the worst thing that ever happened to you. I guess you don't remember that I never asked to be here. Thanks for not being there for my graduation. I guess since you didn't graduate, you're embarrassed. I guess you forgot what pride is, or maybe you're so deep in your pride that you can't admit that you had nothing to teach me in the first place. Can't admit that you're ashamed of a father. Can't admit that you have a broken son, built on broken promises, living in a broken home with only his broken heart. A son who can count on his fingers the time he's seen you. Can count on his fingers like in first grade, when he couldn't count on you coming to see him. And now he's a grown man, and he can count on you letting him down, time after time, let down after let down, until the naive boy he once was is gone. Gone like food off my plate to make sure that my brothers and sisters don't go hungry. Gone like money out of my pocket to make sure that we live outside the poverty line. Gone like any need for you to show me how a man acts. I'm not the kind of man that ducks and dodges when life gets hard and it's time to step up. I'm the kind of man that works hard and puts out for his own. I'm a better father to your kids than you will ever be. And thank you for that. Thank you for nothing. And so poets, when you are uh, finished with your poem, definitely uh, we, we are exiting and entering from both from the same wing. 
Um, thank you so much. Could we make some noise one more time for the poet, the first poet to touch the stage? I mean, like, we make it look good, but like, it's hard work coming up on the stage and talking to com complete strangers, very, very attractive strangers, but strangers nonetheless, um, and, and revealing sort of our mo more intimate uh, um, musings. And so I thank in advance every single human being who has the bravery um, to come up here in this space and to do their thing. We're gonna have a good time this evening right now. I'm gonna need y'all to start clapping right now for yourselves. That's because we made it today. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful day. And it's a beautiful time to start a poetry slam. So, you're probably gonna know which teams are gonna be here for this 2017 Grand Slam competition, right? Yeah. Well, let me tell you about them. This is also going to be the, the round, the, the order for this first round. So you know this Poetry Slam has four rounds. For the first round, the order goes like so. And after I say their name and their team name, please, please show them as much love as you can humanly possibly give. First up in the first round, make some noise for Wilson High School. Followed by Wilson, we have McKinley Tech. Then we have Cesar Chavez, AKA Controverse. And last but certainly not least, we have Winston Churchill, AKA the Live Poets Society. So McKinley Tech, that you, you know you're on deck, right? Swag. Let me get these scores for the first calibration poet. I gave y'all ample time to get those scores down, but when we start the slam, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be like black, 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 okay? From low to high, we have 7.2, a 7.4, an 8.1, an 8.8, .8, and a 9.5, but let's give it some noise for the poet and not math. Fantastic. McKinley on deck one more time. Make some noise. Make some noise for the first competing poets of the first slam. First round, I digress. Make some noise for Wilson High School! What's up, I'm Kenny. I'm Kamari. I'm Isaiah. We finna do a poem. I walk in through the door. Book bag heavy, knocking stuff over on the floor. I pick it up, I put it back. I'm, I'm being, being followed by this guy. And he doesn't have a badge, but he has a disposition. And, and I, I have, have the wrong pigment. pigment. And he thinks that this change in my pocket don't add up to enough to be here. When I say here, I mean wherever I cast shadows bigger than the man he might be. I ask, have you seen me before? With a $10 bill in my hand, I, I go, go get, get a drink. drink. I, I hear footsteps. footsteps. I turn around and ask, can you stop following me through the store? I get it. I look suspicious. But some things you can't take off when you walk in. Namely, whatever flesh your mama gave you, baptized in blood. I, I learned, learned early my place in this world through the eyes of others. How, how every glance is stolen. When guilt is all your people have to their name. Can, can you, you stop, stop following me through the store? store? Can, can you stop, stop following me? Period. Period. No. I don't need any help. Stop, Stop following me. me. I don't need your eyes burning a bullet hole in my back. Stop, Stop following, following me. me. I don't need you to call the cops. Stop, Stop following, following me. I don't want to roll around in the back of a squad car. Stop, Stop following, following me. me. I don't want to be face down on the sidewalk. I don't, don't have, have anything, anything that, that isn't is mine. mine. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm sorry for being black and, and a student, student 
and alive and in your store to buy food? Man, it seems like every step I take, there's a worker on my heels. But ever since I've been here, I haven't tried to steal. And they think I'm gonna buy something there? I'll, I'll take, take my, my money, money elsewhere. elsewhere. Sorry about that. My mom always taught me to clean up when I have guests. Judges, give me your numbers. From low to high, we have an 8.0, an 8.4, an 8.9, an 8.9, and a 9.1. Please make some noise for the phenomenal poets who just crossed the stage. Speaking of phenomenal poets, I have three more teams for you for this first round. You want to get it? You want to get into this second poem? Phantasmagorical. On deck, we have Controverse. Make some noise right now for McKinley Tech. Everybody want to be a god. Everybody want to be a deity. Everybody want to cling on to the earth. Nobody want to break free of thee. Mental jail that is meant to jail with the lower side of your potential self. Whatever sent you there will extend and pale. Hello. I'm good. Kind of short. <sighs> For my girlfriend, I dismantled a watch, only to find the one piece turning back time is toward a crown. I think about how your scars won't let you feel worthy of a throne. You were told to be silent, don't make too much noise. Told what path to take, it was never really your choice. Many hands reaching for 12, our hands reaching for you. Hopelessly, as you reach for someone to listen. With such a soft exterior, I understand. You're delicate. You were shown love, not the hazards. The worst part is not the end, it's what happens after. You became numb, losing hope, turning tears into laughter. Your glass was shattered. Trying to place you together helps me understand. I can't blame you for the cuts you leave on my hands. Seeing glass whole is better than seeing parts of sand. I will put you together. Gather your pieces. Show you the introductory to love, and I ain't talking no thesis. You will see the beauty. You deserve a crown. The ability to move your hands counterclockwise, backwards, reversing every tear that's left its footprints upon your face. Wow, are y'all having a great time? I'm having a blast backstage. Make some noise if you're having a good time. Hi, friends in the back. If you just came, my name's Kosi Dunn. I do poems and stuff, and we're all out right here doing poems and stuff for the 2017 LTAB DMV Finals. Yeah, a, a bunch of poets from high school came together and had a whole poetry slam, and these are the top four teams competing. You should find a seat right now. We're having a blast. Make some noise, audience. Fantastic, fantastic. Judges, give me those scores. Awesome. From low to high, we have a 7.1, a 7.8. Is that a seven? Yes. Seven? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, a 7.9, an 8.9. Okay, we're gonna have to run that back. Redacted, redacted, redacted. Okay, starting from the beginning, we have a 7.1, we have a 7.9, a 7.9, an 8.2, and an 8.8, .8, but make some noise for the poet and not these numbers. Woo! It's bright, you know what I'm saying? I gotta get my reading glasses. On deck, we have the Live Poet Society, but make some noise right now for Controverse! The key to the city, check my family tree. You know my uncle taught Diddy. He turned around and taught Biggie, and Biggie taught Jigga. So you can just imagine what he teaching me. My top girl in the winter, my doors off in the summer. I pulled up to the light, and I drove off with a number. Every is the number, like Michael Irvin, but younger. Ain't no preserving my hunger, no day like where did he come from? Well, I got two years in, and a couple of months. 
get a roll with Bobby Brown and had a couple of bumps. They be showing me love, minus a couple of chumps. Hello here today, my name is Jettison Lynchburg. I'm Devonte, no last name. I'm Anita Bath. And I'm Ash Yee. And, and this is The Contribute on Channel 3, Hana, sponsored, sponsored by Whoopi Goldberg, on, on the low. We're here today to talk about how the American dream has been abducted. I don't know where it is, but it's definitely not around Berry Farms or Edgewood. Wait, why not? Well, it ain't got no Starbucks. Not too many people can handle a shot of reality with their espresso. Do we have a description of this? American dream? Yeah, what, is, what does this American dream look like? Well, it definitely has eyes like the oceans, hair like wilted straw, and orange and skin like a ripe tangerine. It's probably dressed in a tight suit with pockets full of green. So, Donald Trump? Well, I'm not disturbed by the sudden disappearance of the American dream from its usual home. Where's that? People's, People's imaginations. imaginations. Let's see what Twitter has to say. At Real Live Mo 69 said, my ancestors built this land from scratch and are now trapped in the new Jim Crow. You stole my founding fathers from their land of gold. No one will miss you. Hashtag praise of the abductor. I also got a DM that since this chaotic turn of events, Lady Liberty has been running rampant. So messed up that her edges are jutting out everywhere. But I thought she was white with straight hair. Well, we need to get to the bottom of this bizarre turn of events. Jettison, didn't you run into Uncle Sam out on the streets? Let me tell you something. I asked Sam, are you afraid because an inferiority is parading around on you like a welcoming mat while humming the slanders of your name into existence? Well, well what, what did, did he, he say? say? He said the only thing he's afraid of is ISIS, women in power, and communism. Well, I don't care about Lady Liberty, Uncle Sam, or Donald Trump. I mean Trump. Yeah, it, it seems like only they inherited the American dream. If, if you, you ask, ask me, the American dream was never really meant for us. More, it's more like the Trump Care Act for most Americans. Enemy disguised as ally. I hope the American dream was abducted by its worst nightmare, an unrelenting force, unable to be pushed aside. I hope its abductor is queer. I, I hope its abductor is woman. I hope its abductor is black. I hope it's been abducted by free will and it never comes back. back. Well, that's all the time we have today, folks. Join us tomorrow when we talk about the tragic divorce between Donald Trump and his toupee. Hey. And, and this, this is The Contribute on Channel 3, Hunter, sponsored by Whoopi Goldberg, on the low. Good night. Shout out all of our tech staff here at the Kennedy Center. Make some noise. You know, not all heroes wear capes. Some of them just wear all black. You y'all should just hire me for marketing. I I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? Um, judges, do the thing. Fantastic. From low to high, we have a 7.5, a 7.6, a 7.6, an 8.5, and an 8.9. Make some noise one more time for controversy. Wow. Sunrise, sunset, y'all. It's already almost the end of the first round. Our time is just dwindling and dwindling. I can't even. I'll push on. Right now, make some noise for Live Poet Society! In this age of actionless activism, we have the privilege to engage in slacktivism. We find ourselves suffocating in the silence of white feminism and cut the tongues off the people we, we forget, forget to stand up for. Self-sympathy for the times we were offended by words. Yet when offenses become action, we're, we're too, too scared, scared to, to speak. speak. Her sign reads, pussy grabs back. But she's silent about communities plagued by sexual assault. She shows up to fight against the patriarchy. But about that Black Lives Matter march, she, she must have missed the bus. 
That night she comes home and, home and throws her sign to the landfill. Her throat burns from chanting. But that was her only sacrifice. She fills her photo album to capacity because pics or it didn't happen. Hashtag activism. Hashtag women's march. Hashtag changing the world. She says that's enough for this lifetime. She wouldn't bear to walk so far. For so long. Ever again. again. She says she's an activist. But only seems to act when it's convenient. As if the 24-hour news cycle fairy waves her magic wand and suddenly everything solved. There are still girls missing in the city. But, but we, we aren't, aren't looking for them. them. There are still black boys beaten into the dirt by cops. But, but we, we aren't, aren't fighting for them. them. There are still names to be spoken into eternity. But, but we are silent. There are still people to fight for. Struggles to shoulder. This fight didn't begin with our march. And, and it, it doesn't, doesn't end with your Instagram, Instagram post. post. She says she's fought enough for her right to let her leg hair grow. As if that is all that is left to stand up for. She says she's an activist. But she only acts when it's something trending on Twitter. Because activism is only activism when, when she's, she's acting, acting for her own. own. Cause if the gunshots didn't ring in the suburbs, they, they must have not made noise. Cause if there's an orchestra of clothes being teared at the seams. And a chorus of no, stop, please. It must have only rang loud when, when the, the news was, was turned on. Cause if there's a cell block overflowing with innocent people, they must not be banging on bars because prison walls are soundproof. If there are bombs dropped thousands of miles away, it sounds too much like thunder, and we, we can't, can't help but hide. Because if we are taught that genocide only happens in history books, we're too busy taking notes to, to hear the bodies falling at our feet. Our voices are a weapon. Our mouths are machine gun, and our vernacular is venom. We have a responsibility to stand up for the people who the system has silenced. Revolution, Revolution is our reputation. reputation. And we are bound for liberation once, once we realize our freedom is bound in theirs. They say there's a special place in hell for women who don't stand up for other women. So if you or your sister or your mother or your grandmother are the only women you stand up for, maybe it's time for a change. Visitors, the first round. Judges, give me those scores. From low to high, we have an 8.4. We have an 8.9, a 9.1, a 9.4, and a 9.7. Make some noise for the poets and not the scores. We ain't here for no scores. Wow, y'all. Like, we have, we have poems about love poems about the financial implications of prejudice, poems about the montage of the current events plaguing us, poems about complications in feminist politics. And this is just the first round. Make some noise for yourselves. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm excited to see what we, what we got cooking for these later rounds. Um, though, I would like to tell y'all, make sure all of your phones are silent or vibrate or explode um but don't just make sure it's not making noise right now here in this space though if you do have one of these smartphones um you could raise it up in the air take a picture and then put it on the internet and when you do so you can put the hashtag l tab l t a b d m v 20 17. So we can make sure to aggregate all of our, you know what I'm saying, our social media content to the one place so we can be able to give you all feedback and whatnot. Okay? We're making sure this is a completely, you know what I'm saying, reciprocity space. That's a word. Don't count me on it. This is the order for the second round. We have McKinley Tech going first, Controverse going second, Live Poet Society going third, and we're ending the second round with Wilson High School. So, on deck, we have Controverse, but make some noise right now for McKinley Tech! We never been tamed. 
even while cloaked in relaxes made by those who loathe their own blackness, self-hatred disguised in the maintenance of the embers of our kinks. Overdose and conditioners made to control the perimeters of our scalp, edges snatched by this hicks, not a head expected to be out of line. But, but this, this head, head on no cooperation, cooperation, not even when it's supposed to be slicked down. I have naps that would snap the unbreakable combs and, and challenge the, the once concrete societal norms. norms. Straight hair, no longer the goal as we start being slaves to the chair. We, we rebel. rebel. Our strands down, raised into fists against the system. It's no lie, I buy a $100 hair just to fit in. My hair is short and curly, it don't match the expectations out here buying the long Brazilian and Malaysian. This straight hair preferred over my natural curls because this is what y'all managed to control. Hiding my hair into rows to sew in society. Won't, Won't conform, conform to, to the norm. norm because my hair is forever changing. Braids forever slinging. Yon say we get information. Flip my hair quick if I don't like what you saying. You could say it's not mine, but I don't see you paying. Always, Always the, the topic, topic of the conversation. conversation. Try to mold me into the expectation. Forcing, Forcing me to, to fit the status, status quo. quo. In our direction is where they aim. Stripping and chopping to deconstruct our roots, giving us more reasons to purchase or change to, to accept these prones, these strands of protein. Our nappy, lock, braided hair on, on trial for this silent protest. protest. Met this boy at a party and he asked, "Is that a nigga?" Which led to, "I know your scalp getting cold. Sure, do you never getting married? Being so bald." My dad even continues to ask me, why you cut your hair in the first place? His association with the length of my hair and my femininity is clear. I, I lose, lose the battle with it, I lose, I lose without. without. I will never be able to fit your definition of beauty because braids, locks, twists, and afros seem to be anything, anything but natural. Bleach was never meant for color. Clorox and dreadlocks is nothing like bread and butter. Bleach leaves stains like inverted Dalmatian. Spring-like strands make the bleach bounce back. Stiff arm, um, white, white supremacy, supremacy stumble back. back. My hair cannot fit in an equation with the degradation of rules I have given life. My head does not portray a business-like image. Who said I wanted to be framed? Frozen in the moment. Because of my hair, I can't get the job. I, I would, would rather, rather be, be a, a poet. poet. Tell me, have you ever gotten a perm? Ever felt the pain of a chemical burn? And they'll try to justify it by saying that beauty hurts. My hair is my choice and my choice are my words. They, they say, say your hair can speak volumes, but I still don't feel hurt. A cheap, a cheap with y'all, well I'm a leap with y'all. A cheap, a cheap with y'all, well I'm a leap with y'all. I'm not ready for my b-boy stance. I don't even, even really have a b-boy stance. I don't even know if that was a b-boy stance I took. Um, judges, please give me your scores. <laughs> we have from low to high an 8.7, an 8.8, an 8.8, an 8.8, and a 9.6. Make some noise for the poets, though, and not arbitrary numbers. Wow. Second round going off swimmingly. On deck, we have the Live Poets Society. Coming up to the stage, make some noise for Controverse! All the way to the stage. I woke up in beast mode. With my girl that's beauty in the beast though. Been I fight these niggas sleep though. Lady Liberty birthed me and I'm a misfit to my mother. Hated by humanity for just being human, I'm America's trouble child. Black beaten and barricaded within my mental because while it's a man's world, it's a white man's planet. And this country is no exception. I wish they would cease the peace talks. Weapons leave us deceased in capitalist streets from supremacy to slavery, violence, as American as cherry pie. And in my mind, I am prey to a game that wants to exterminate my race. I don't expect to win. I am just prepared to play, watch myself slowly die, whether it be from the field yard or the prison yard. My heart rate is constantly sped up from paranoia of the gun because violence is as American as cherry pie. And I'm America's trouble child. A sum of the capitalist slum where the psyche is trampled, overrun with fear, brutality, and terrorism from Syria to Chicago. The souls of men are hollow vessels. Canvases waiting to be dyed the colors of green profit, only to die with no moral conscience in a world where violence is as American as cherry pie. America's sweet. 
ripe full of understanding. We find our resolutions in police shots, our declarations in dead bodies, communions in capitalist gods in the synagogue at Wall Street. We perpetrate the stereotype of killer from the police of our country to the soldiers of Iraq that killed innocent lives. The ideals of peace remain long deceased. I am nothing but another Huey Newton, silent with his methods, but loud with his peace. They'd aim rifles and Berettas at me to target the truth I tell. Fire bullets to barrage through my heart, make not flesh out of my head. They'd kill the message birth so that the masses don't understand. Lady Liberty birthed me, and I am a misfit to my mother. Hated by humanity for just being human, my hope and stamina constantly lies in tattered ruins with the minds of my peers infected with ignorance. How long must I live like this? Repeat after me, say peace. Say love. Say family. Now say it like you mean it, say peace. Love. Family. Swag, swag, swag. Judges, give me your scores. From low to high, we have an 8.4. We have an 8.7, an 8.9, a 9.0, and a 9.1. But we don't care about those scores. Make some noise for the poet who just came on stage and shared their truth. We got a lot of truth in store for y'all right now. And I don't want to get in the way of it. So on deck, we've got Wilson High School, but make some noise, start making some noise, start making some noise for Live Poets Society! Pray for the ones listening to right now, struggling, feel like giving it right now. I pray for you, pray that you come back home, I pray that you understand that you never... Hi, um, my poem is called Soldier. I've been home for one hour now. My clothes still reek of casualties. So I can't help but inhale a whiff of the war every time I take a breath. Every breath transports me back to the battlefield. Bedroom becomes a bomb shelter. Garage reeks of grenades. My ribs rattle like a revolver. My body was discharged a long time ago, but I still live in a war zone. It's been four hours now, and it's not the same. I know my mom's been crying. I know she's cried every night that I've been away because she treats my body like a corpse. Her fingers slink around my skin like I'm a dead man walking. But it's hard not to feel dead when you know she's already written your eulogy. I don't know what I did this for. I feel more pistol than pride as I examine the casualties of my existence. I am no hero. I've done unspeakable things, made myself more murderer than man. My nucleus has turned nuclear. My sanity is screaming SOS from the sands of my scars. Help me. How do I murder my memory? Replaying in my mind like war cries, like his cries, like her cries, like mine. My thoughts are exploding in my brain and they're louder than a bomb. Reminding me that everywhere I go, I'm the wrecking ball that's caused all this destruction. But everywhere I go, people tell me I'm a hero because I sacrificed myself for this country a country that's forced so many to shed their own blood, America. You are an abusive relationship, a broken promise, a power complex, America. You are a shotgun full of dirty secrets. You manifested the destiny of all our dreams deferred. Your flag wears the red of the blood spilt for you, the blue of the tears shed for you. The fabric of our nation stitched together with genocide, oppression, and war. America, you did this to me. And I fail to see how fighting for this is heroic. Everything feels numb. I'm so confused. I don't know what to make of what they tell me. I want to believe they're right, that I am a hero, a soldier. I mean, killer. I mean, imperialist. I mean, casualty. I mean, I'm no Superman. I'm more man of steel heart than man of steel. I mean, hero. I am a goddamn hero. God, relieve me of my chains. Set me free. Yeah. 
Ooh. With that slight lemonade. Ooh, it's the, it's the only like fruit juice that don't get stale. That was supposed to be like a cover thing about Beyonce and her artistry, but I totally botched that one. We're gonna do this over. Judges, give me the numbers. Phantasmagorical from lowest to highest. We have an 8.5, an 8.6, a 9.1, a 9.1, and a 9.0 that I totally didn't do in order, but those are all the numbers. We don't care about no numbers. It's not like nobody's keeping track at home. We care about the poets. That's why we're clapping. I love y'all, y'all beautiful audience. Incredible audience. So lively and listening actively. We're gonna close out this second round right now. Make some noise. For Wilson High School! Soft, vulnerable, hurt, angry, happy, things that I'm not allowed to be. Betrayal, exhaustion, heartbreak, anxiety, things that I'm not allowed to feel. My hair, my nose, my lips, my breasts, my stomach, my ass, my legs, my thighs, things that I'm supposed to hate, things that I'm supposed to feel insecure about, things that I am insecure about. It's kind of hard to ignore something that you're constantly reminded of. It's the feeling that I get when my mother makes me change out of my shorts before I leave the house because my legs are too long and they will draw attention. And attention isn't something that a young lady should seek as if my body is something I should hide in the presence of a man. It's the feeling that I get when someone tells me I'm pretty. I want to believe them, but my self-doubt be a cage. Sometimes I feel trapped by the body I'm in, a prisoner in my own skin, but then I remember. My skin don't fry within two minutes of being in the sun. My melanin be solar panels, channeling energy from above, gently kissing my lips. My lips be chocolate-covered strawberries, sweet, plump, and always juicy. My hair be crown. It is to be admired and not touched. My legs be branches from the strongest tree. My thighs be gates guarding heaven. My breasts be small but never inadequate. Will my ass get fatter if I start doing squats? Get implants? Get a boyfriend? Why are young women naming their body development relationship weight? As if your growth and development is to be accredited to a man. As if your body isn't blooming on its own because you are growing into a perfect divine flower. Your body be temple. These boys better bow down to you because you hold the greatest power of all in your womb. Whom else? and the world can give life, but a woman, your womb be gold mine. And I know there will be men who will seek your treasures, but your pussy is priceless. It cannot be bought, it must be earned. Because young men are known for playing pirates. They will take your treasure and they won't leave a map. You won't get it back. Young women have their treasures stolen from them far too often. So remember, your eyes be the window to your soul. He should look there before he goes digging for gold. Wow, I can't even. I just odd. Judges, do the thing. From low to high, we have a 9.2. We have a 9.3, a 9.3, a 9.3, and a 9.5. Make some noise for the poet and not math. The saying a thing about no scores. Incredibly young poets, ages 13, 19, just blowing my mind like usual. I just want to just throw away every pen I've ever owned. Like this is the future. 
Ladies and gentlemen, and all you beautiful non-binary individuals in between, please, please make some noise right now for yourselves. Make some noise for the poets who've touched this stage so far. Make some noise for DJ Double A One K. And I guess while you're at it, you know what I'm saying? We've had some young, some uh, some some new blood, you know, some new poets um, in our Split This Rock DCU Slam Team L Tab community come up and share. Um, this is for a lot of folks. This is their first time in a stage this big. But we, you know what I'm saying? We want to make this an intergenerational dialogue. Say intergenerational. Yeah, that's a lot of syllables. I said it. Um, but uh, no, what, what better way to have like a short little intermission before the, between the competition um, than showcasing some of our brilliant alumni? Say brilliant alumni! Ah, oh, you're just, I, I, yeah, that's me. But I'm not performing right now. Right now, I'd like to welcome to the stage. I want you to help me welcome to a stage um, one of my favorite poets. I would be so, I would consider my life an accomplishment if I'm a footnote in their biography that will be written. Um, future poet laureate and just really, really cool person. Came all the way after her studies at NYU to kick it with us. A PG County, you know what I'm saying, a Blue Line resident, uh, a Bishop McNamara High School alumni, um, and a former member with me on the uh, Mission McNamara Slam team. Could you help me make some noise for Bobby Johnson? Make some noise for Bobby Johnson, y'all! Hello, beautiful people. It is so good to be here. It's so here, good to hear all of your stories. Thank you so much for sharing with me. My teacher asks all the black boys in the class what it's like to be America's biggest target. No one seems to notice that he doesn't ask the black girls anything. And we are too used to being America's biggest disappearing act to mind being ignored. We are children of the soil, and this is an adult conversation. So we pacify our fears by reciting the names of dead black boys because we have no names to call our own. My teacher did not ask me a question, but I raised my hand anyway, because. You have to say my name to call on me, and that's all the proof that I need that I exist in this moment. America has taught me invisibility ain't much of a superpower. They say we need a voice to speak up, but black girls have a knack for dying soundlessly, so how can I be a martyr if I was never invited to the movement? They march on our bones and recite the names of men like girls that look like me ain't died on these same streets for these same reasons. My only contribution to the hashtag is my womb, but it's a ghost town that mistakes nooses for umbilical cords, so our boys are born with toe tags. Our girls are born without names because we know no one will say them. Our sons charge for being black while living, we wear their offenses to their funerals. And this is the only day that I matter, the day that I can trade in my son's obituary for a name. There are girls who look just like me, who disappeared in droves and we called them our girls as if it was too much of a hassle to learn their names. There are days where I misplace the sound of my own name. I do not know where I've left it, but I know every place that it's not. It's not scrolling a news teleprompter. It's not clicking in the back of an officer's tongue. It's not salting all the tears for the black boys lost. It's not in the fine print of which black lives actually matter. America has a funny way of telling you you don't matter. And it sounds like if a black girl falls dead in the street and no one is there to hear it, did it happen? If a black girl falls dead in the street and everyone is there to hear it, did it happen? If a black girl who was never told she was standing dies, does it even count as a fall? Oops. 
sorry for the day delay. I was getting my life. Um, Bobby Johnson, one more time. Uh, we are so thankful for the work. Uh, we are so thankful for the work. We are so thankful. Um, I have a treat because I get to bring another DCU Slam T al alumni up to the stage right now to do a poem. Um, incessantly and belligerently fly. Hailing, you know what I'm saying, from, from Salisbury State University. All educated. Syracuse, Syracuse. As is, sorry, I saw the thing on the shirt and totally just did the wrong thing. Anyway, incessantly fly and coming from Syracuse University. Um, an LTAB DMV alumnus, a DCU Slam Team alumnus, and one of the wittiest people on Twitter. Uh, make some noise right now for Galen Smith, y'all! <laughs> Hey everybody. Y'all, I really just got back into DC like two hours ago from Syracuse, so excuse my voice. Um, word, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Cool. My footsteps must sound like headboards banging against the wall. My voice must be orgasmic flow of innuendo my walk moving to the rhythm of his strokes. He always imagines me naked, stripped, sex doll for his fantasy, pussy on standby, always wet and ready for him to slide into body. Not my body, but his favorite pastime. Not body at all, but video game, where he is always two steps ahead, programmed only to win victory, defined by how long he can make home of me. He only texts me when he's horny. Shares thoughts of what he thinks about doing to me, knowing that he would be the first to do any of this to me. He covets my virginity, caring not for the person whom it belongs to, doesn't want to get to know the whole of me, is only interested in exploring me from the neck down, only caring to go as deep as my cervix will allow him. And this is not about me, more the idea of me. I am just a stand in for the moment, or you're here, so I guess you'll do, and I am tired of the way he views my virginity as victory, my body as plaything, and me non-existent. His chances of sleeping with me are non-existent. I am learning to demand respect for the whole of me, for people to get to know the whole of me. I am more than my body, how it just be bearer of light, be beautiful and mine. I am not just sex doll, my pussy is powerful and personal and turned on by more than text messages from a boy who wouldn't be this bold in person. My virginity is important to me because it is mine, my life, my choice to open or to close any and every part of me. I know that I am worth more than some boy who imagines me only in his bed, but not in his life. I know who I am. The struggles placed upon me without my consent. How black women's bodies been martyred since the beginning. How my ancestors fought under the weight of men, forcing them to bear children and shackling them to names they could not pronounce. How this body is politicized, polarized, picked apart so the best things can be sold elsewhere, all while telling me that black ain't beautiful, but I know who I am. How my body is a temple and sometimes I pray in it to remind myself that God still loves the Mary Magdalene and my thoughts, how pleasure and purity both be my choice. And how my thighs hold as much magic as my brain, as my heart. And I will not apologize for sharing or not sharing any of it. Wow, keep clapping one more time for Galen Smith and Bobby Johnson. So, I'm hearing lots of things, right? You know, I, I like being here at these events because I can keep, you know, I keep my hand on the pulse. You know, I can stay hip and happening and hear sort of what our young folks are saying. So some of the things I'm, I'm hearing is that our young people our future leaders of tomorrow are dissatisfied with our government. They're dissatisfied with the way adults seem to divide each other. Uh, we seem particularly dissatisfied with this concept of masculinity um, in patriarchy that just seems to be harshing our vibes. 
in general? Is that like a consensus or like a like a yeah? That's what I that's what I've been hearing. Um, so hopefully we take all these things that we hear and we don't just go home and you know eat some chocolate and go to sleep. We go home and we're like, wow, I'm empow empowered. I've been given tools in the language to have important and possibly, possibly difficult conversations with our peers, especially, especially in situations where we have power, possibly in the form of privilege, to enact changes to the myriad of inequities described by our young people right here. This is all just fancy words for take what you hear here and go forward and use it use it to have conversations with other people. If you like something you hear, if you disagreed with something you hear, go up to the poet and respectfully say, hey, uh, you said something in the poem. Could we, could we like talk about that? I would like to learn more. And this is how we, we, we build a powerful and brave community. Say brave communities. Brave. Awesome. Um, now clap for just being here so far. This is, this is now the third round of the 2017 LTAB Finals. And this is the order. So, we have Controverse coming up first, we have the Live Poet Society coming up second, then we have Wilson High School, and we will be completing the third round with McKinley Tech. So, on deck, we have the Live Poets Society. Uh, and then, coming up to the stage, we have Controverse, but before we have Controverse coming to the stage, I should inform you, and especially I should inform the judges, that this round is something different than what you heard in the last two rounds. Um, this is what we call the lightning round. Say lightning round. Lightning Say lightning round. lightning round. Yeah, with a dab of ranch. Um, the lightning round uh, will feature poems uh, with a significantly shorter uh, time span. So poems were typically uh, three minutes um, around that sort of ballpark. Uh, we have a grace period, but after sort of three minutes and some change, we start deducting points for time penalty. This third round is to encourage alternative forms of, of writing, um, to challenge our young writers to explore different ways to conveying their points and ideas and experiences. So this poem, these poems will be roughly, you know what I'm saying, one minute, one minute, 30 seconds. We begin uh, deducting points shortly after the one minute, 30 seconds. If you're interested in all the really you know, complicated and torturous rules and whatnot, you can talk to some of our people in charge of the event. But right now, are y'all ready for the lightning round? Yeah. I say y'all ready for the lightning round. Yeah. I'm drizzling some lightning, make some noise. Right now, on deck, we have Live Poet Society coming to the stage, Controverse! Ain't, ain't no mercy, ain't, ain't, ain't no mercy. Quarters up, arcade junkies and console heroes. Don't get shot by the blue bombers. Don't get caught by those shadows. They're gonna tell you that you ain't got a halo. They'll try to make you quake, break your ankles like 2K, lock you in a tomb, no raider in sight. They are machines that view lives as entertainment, view struggles as level ups and debuffs. But guess what? They left me to fight in the streets, and I left the king of fighters. Broke me down, I built myself back up from broken pieces like Tetris. They left me, but I am an arcade hero. I came in this world with a jar full of quarters. One by one, you ate my lives in blessings. A couple of you gave me a nice little lie to live. I guess I'll leave this place with only one token. That's all I need for a game called life. And I know I'm not ending it with the game over. Woo. Make some noise one more time for the poet. Judges, give me these arbitrary scores that we don't all really care about. 
Oh yeah, the math. From low to high, we have 7.3, we have a 7.5, we have a 7.7, .7, a 7.9, and an 8.7. Please make some noise for the poet who came here on the stage sharing their words for free. We have, we're selling shirts um, in the back. They're really fly. If you see uh, Joseph Green right there, you know what I'm saying? Look at it, look at it, turn around, turn around. These fly, that, imagine that, but as a t-shirt. It's not the hoodie. But yeah, that image behind me, you can get that in t-shirt form. All for a, 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 a reason, $18, $15. Wow, I just gave you a deduction, you're welcome. It's $15, it was 18, but you know what I'm saying, just say Kosi sent you and it's gonna be $15 for you. $15 for you. Um, please, please, please go to that uh, Split This Rock table um, and sign up to be a volunteer. Sign up to be a donor. That would be fantastic. Get our young folks to brave new voices all the way in the Bay Area. Okay? Okay. Um, on Deckery, we have Wilson. Come to the stage right now. Please, please, please give a warm welcome to the Live Poet Society. <laughs> <laughs> there's me and there's drifting. There's being sad and there's the fact that I've been free falling through air that I can't breathe and I'm not sure I'm moving anymore. I've been falling for years now but I don't remember tripping. I don't remember losing my balance and stumbling face first into this melancholy. I don't remember the moment I stopped flying and started drifting. I can't seem to pinpoint where I was when suddenly I was plummeting so fast toward the ground that I thought I could already see my blood on the grass. It's a little hard to think back on the day when I realized I wasn't plummeting, no. No, I was cascading like a feather. Slow, almost soft, like, like maybe hitting the bottom wouldn't be so bad. Like, like maybe when I get there, I'll be able to breathe again. Like maybe I'm just a fallen angel. And these years have only been moments. Does that make it better? <laughs> Hey, we had one of the judges who was a Shakespeare fan. This is totally apt for the lightning round. Brevity is the soul of wit. What play uh, was that from? No one reads books. Anyway, judges, give me your scores. It's a Shakespeare quote. Brevity is the soul of wit. Okay, I'm learned. Um, from low to high, we have a 7.8. A 7.8, an 8.3, an 8.8, and a 9.0. Please make some noise for the poet touch the stage. Hi, folks, waiting behind the, the things. We're having a poetry slam. Find more information at hashtag LTAB DMV 2017. Thank you. Um, from on deck, we have McKinley Tech. Uh, coming to the stage right now, please welcome Wilson High School. C'est les malades du cancer de leur famille Tous n'ont pas de quoi aller au Maroc ou en Mauritanie Pour l'évacuation sanitaire, la prise en charge médicale Après l'indignation, c'est la solidarité nationale L'église club pour aider à lancer une pétition Leur mission, rassembler au moins 200 millions On le sait I'm Isaiah. I'm Nas. My name is Robin. And I'm Kenny. And we've got to do a poem. <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you if it has never done anything for you. If your country is a row of jagged teeth, do not expect its mouth to open without tearing at your flesh. If, if your, your country, country is a set of bronze knuckles, do not expect a helping hand. 
If, if your country, country has its hands around your throat, throats, do not expect it to save you a voice. If your country has chewed on your heritage, spat on your inheritance, and threatens to carry your body into the same red wood your ancestors decorated with tangled songs, do not offer your tied wrists in a bouquet of fingers. Do not offer your blood for their machines or mouths. Do not offer any part of you. Do not listen when your country tells you of how your body is not your body. How, how your, your life is not, not your life. life. You, have you have done, done enough, enough for your country. country. It's, it's time, time for your country, country to do for you. I do my own stunts. Judges, lay it on me. Ha ha, ha ha. I love the swiftness. Y'all becoming rather adept at this judging thing. Uh, make some noise for an 8.7, a 9.1, a 9.2, a 9.2, a 9.5. I'm just playing. Make some noise for the poet. The poet. That's who we're here for. Scores are forgotten. But the poetry is always remembered, especially because we're streaming live on the Kennedy Center's website. So we are going to be a part of the Millennium Stage Archive. This event right now will be indelibly marked on the pages of history or until like a apocalyptic event that destroys all of our databases in the universe occurs, which is quite possible if you read my type of science fiction. Um, Coming up, finishing the final round of the, the final poet of the third round, the penultimate poet of the penultimate round, make some noise for McKinley Tech! I don't want no drama, they don't want no drama. Motherfucker, son, he, I ain't had no father. I said I'ma get grants on my mama's mama. I guess I'll be a teen. Yeah, guess I'll be a teen. <sighs> I guess I'll be a teen. I wear all chucks and super skinny jeans. I don't give no, f society just crushes my dreams. I guess I'll be a teen. I'll give up on love and not even know what love means. I come home tired, I can't even keep my room clean. So I Cheetos on my drug and I get high on caffeine. I guess I'll be a teen. I'm told I'm just disrespectful, but nobody knows that life has become so stressful. If I do something dumb and I'm a male, then I could easily get shot. And if I do something dumb and I'm a female, then now I'm a thought. And I gotta look impressive, gotta go out looking fierce and aggressive, and that only means many skirts and short dresses, but not too short or else I give off the wrong message. I'm told not to be too loud or too expressive, but to me, if I'm not loud, then I just look depressive. So I'm scared of being called a simple teen, like I don't have any emotions or any feelings. We shout out DJ Double A One K. You know what I'm saying? Keeping the boom, the boom backs in abundance. Yeah, that was wordplay. I was proud of myself for that one. Judges, from low to high, we have a 7.8. We have an 8.4. We have a 9.0, a 9.3, and a 9.4. But make some noise for the final poet of the third round. Wow, family. It's the final round of the 2017 LTAB Grand Slam Finals. How y'all feeling? Same. I also feel those feelings. We're gonna end this on a high note. We're gonna give all the energy we have in this room. Teams, I know y'all been doing this throughout the entire the entire uh, competition, but y'all are gonna be clapping for every single poet who touches the stage. Even if you didn't know them, even if you know them a little bit on the internet, we're gonna show all the love we possibly have, humanly possible, in this space. I want this to be the loudest, the most raucous uh, four poem round 
ever in the history of Poetry Slam possible. So could you make that happen? Fantastic. I believe in you. I know we can make this happen. I know we can make this happen. This is going back to the original format. These poems will be significantly longer than the poems from the last round. We're going back to the three minute and some change time penalty. So this will be the order of the final round. We have Live Poet Society coming up first. Then we have Wilson High School. Then we have McKinley Tech. And then we're finishing it off with Controverse. So right now, Wilson knows they're on deck. But give all the noise you can possibly muster for the Live Poet Society! Do you see that little girl in the corner of the room? She is a nothing that fought to be something, a survivor of a forgotten thing. She is the ghost of my every day's past. Dear little girl, you are like a hundred thousand other. I know your story. I am your story. Four years old, you thought you were a traveler. Imagination was your playground. Six years old, you thought you were a hero. You imagined yourself in the books that you read. They made you feel bigger than you were. Eight years old, you thought you were an orphan be because mommy was dead and daddy was never around anymore. 10 years old, daddy hits you with an open palm, with a magazine with his eyes open. 10 years old, your stepmother killed you with every word she uttered from her witch-like lips. Worthless, useless disappointment. 10 years old, you knew you were a disappointment. 10 years old, you wanted to die. And the only thing that stopped you was the fear of how they'd react when you got blood on the floor. 12 years old, a woman sat you down and told you you weren't going home. 12 years old, they put your life into a trash bag, an accurate representation of what you were to them. In foster care, your problems were disposable. Your family, now a handful of slaves to the system. 12 years old, they dumped you on an unfamiliar doorstep where people profited from your misfortune and you stayed there even when they starved you, till your olive Hispanic skin turned to white, till your bones poked out of you like they wanted to leave too. You stayed there, even when he touched you, when you didn't want him to, whispered things that you didn't want him to. You stayed there, even when their screaming shook the walls, even when her crying stood your hairs on end. I understand. A lot of people had it worse than you. You met girls who tried to die, children that were felt in the night, boys burned for speaking up, beaten for not being man enough, children who clung to smoke and substance like it was life support. You, little girl, may have lost your innocence, but you are lucky to be alive. Kids like you lose themselves and what people assume them to be. Kids like you may think of the system as a revolving door because they're in and out so much, nowhere is ever home. Children are not supposed to understand what it means to be expendable, to be throwaway, removable. Minor is the perfect term because all too often our children dreamed inferior because they are young, silenced because they are small. You Little girl, like many others, know all too well how adults act when they assume you're in the wrong. Little girl, you now are a veteran of corruption. Thank you for your endurance, for giving me a voice after spending so many years having none. You know, Joseph earlier regaled us about all the incredible events that Split This Rock and the DCU Slam team are a part of. Um, but you all know it's just May, y'all. So we just getting started with a lot more events and a lot more programming just for y'all and the young people and everyone who's a literary enthusiast. So 
please, please, please sign up for Split This Rock's mailing list. Go to splitthisrock.org. Um, find ways for you not only to support um, financially or physically or um, any way you can to support um, Split This Rock, but also, you know what I'm saying, uh, so figure out ways to support um, just writers in your community. Find people who are writing poems and lift those poems up. If you hear something that's socially justice-minded, please email them to us, uh, Split This Rock. We love, we love, we love poetry, and we especially love poetry at the intersection of social justice. Judges, give me those numbers. We have from low to high an 8.4, an 8.5, a 9.2, a 9.3, and a 9.8, but that's not why we're here. Make some noise for the poet. On deck, we have McKinley Tech, but please, welcome Wilson! Hello, my name is Robin. Hi, I'm Hannah. And this poem is called Miss Tatas. I remember a time I could walk around my home shirtless, but naked. Amen. As an infant, toddler. A child at play who grew up with brothers only knew shirts versus skin football games. A, a teenage, teenage girl, girl who was comfortable enough in her own skin to flaunt it. I remember when discussions of bras were more uncomfortable than they were endearing. And shoulder pain from straps was supposed to be my new best friend. From, from seventh, seventh grade, grade and the rest, rest of my life. But that was the least bit of pain I felt after embracing my prison. The incarceration of stares from strangers in places that were meant for education. A license of cat calls and misogynistic BS. BS. Shackles, Shackles wrapped around my wrist as a reminder that I no longer have freedom over my own body. My breasts tell me of societal judgment and sexual expectations. So, so dear world, my boobs, my business. business. Like when my mother tells me to change my shirt because a man is coming over. But, but mommy, if, if I, I have to wear something else in my own home, why is that man coming over? Tell me it's my fault, boys stare. They're, They're just, just being boys. boys. Don't, Don't tell me to cover up my, my 36 C's. Double D's. Tatas. Jugs. Racks. Boobies. How could the world be so shook by these phrases, but have no problem using them to slide in my DMs? My boobs were not made as a novelty. Brought about by the goddess Juno in hopes that we'll be praised as mothers to nurture our kin. But I think you care more about if I'm whipping them out as a maiden call than to feed someone who doesn't even know what sex is. My, my boobs, boobs are, are no curse, curse no problem, problem, but my power, my, my pride, my business. Don't, don't ever tell me how to live with them. You having a good time? Me too, me too. Make some noise if you're having a good time. That's good. That's good customer feedback. Judges, we need your feedback. From lowest to highest, we have an 8.8, .8, an 8.9, a 9.0, a 9.0, and a 9.0. Please make some noise for the poets. Wow. I'm already getting separation anxiety. We only have two more poets left. But I will push on. Hopefully we all push on together. On deck, we have Controverse. But coming up to the stage, please make some noise for McKinley Tech. From my younger brother, I never thought I would loathe the rising sun. Its familiar warmth evokes the memory of the one that was ripped away from me. Sweet boy, smile like melting ice cream on a hot day. His teeth, not yet used for biting, not one venomous phrase slithering past his lips. This was during a time when he danced to commercial jingles and looked to me for protection, a son whose creation could etch a shadow of joy upon his mother's face, is now a stubborn flower, pride from its roots, 
forced in a soul that it doesn't belong to, forced to do some groan he wasn't yet ready to do, he becomes a welting stem. And the shell of the brother I used to know, how do I mourn the loss of one who still lives, whose breaths I can still hear in the morning when the sun rises, his body awake shed moves as if every day he rose from the security of a dark grave, the sweet boy, whose teeth wouldn't let whose teeth wouldn't let pass words that hurt, but now, like cracking thunder on sensitive ears, he sees that those who care most, he thinks of me as nothing but an enemy, one who wants to drain him of all his powers and take away anything that brought him strength. Those were never my intentions. It's just I only wanted you to shed light on what's best for you. And for that, younger brother, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you don't see the purity in my actions. I'm sorry you see my advice as an overreaction. I'm sorry you don't quite get it yet. Younger brother, do you know how it feels to unconditionally love a black boy? To love a black boy is to fear. To fear never seeing that familiar glint. To fear never smelling your scent again, no matter how much it resembles outside. To fear not feeling whole because I was once held responsible for your well-being. Loving a black boy means accepting that this world wants to swallow your light and I'm not ready to make you a martyr or a hashtag or a t-shirt if anything was to ever happen to you. If you were to ever be taken from this world, the failed, my failed attempts to protect you would haunt me worse than an unrested soul, haunt me worse than the moments where I should have said I love you. Instead, showed you an unwanted attitude, hoping that it would encourage some sense in you, younger brother. Do you know how it feels to unconditionally love a black boy? I never thought I would loathe the rising sun. Its familiar warmth reminds me of the one that I pushed away. Thank you. Shout out to DJ Double A1K for listening. I see what you did there. Um, judges, from lowest to highest, we have an 8.0, an 8.9, an 8.9, a 9.0, and a 9.3. Make some noise for the poet. And all these poems. I'm so shook, but I'm keeping composed because I'm a professional. Closing out this final round, please make some noise. For controversy! I am the truth, hey, I am the wisdom of the fallen, I'm the youth, hey, I am the greatest, hey, this is the proof, hey, I work hard, pray hard, pay dues, hey, I transform with pressure, I'm hands on with effort, I fell twice before. must be one of those DC kids. What do you mean? Just look at you. I live in DC, but where, where I'm, I'm from, from, Seattle is where my brother would take me to the Pike Place Market, to community of fresh flavors and false security, where my confidence still remains, but I still couldn't find my identity or my rich history. Where, where I'm, I'm from, Atlanta is the place where rappers turn into reality and reality turns into TV. The place where my youth still remains. Although, the spring scent and color of magnolias ripened me a bit too sweet. My mouth was too suppressed in center hospitality to have a mind of its own. Where, where I'm, I'm from, from, Virginia be the place where playgrounds be forests, where my dreams still remain, but my individuality was muddled out by too many cultures that didn't seem to be any bit my own. But, but where, where I stay, my, my melanin blends, blends me in, but my addiction pushes, pushes me out. out. My bruh became mo. My hey man became a Bob. My hella turned to boy. Ooh, Yuga didn't mean a thing to me. When I first came to DC, I was told I wasn't black. Well, I guess that's why I didn't see color as a kid. Nicely brown pupusas, collard greens, and Alfredo white casseroles were all served on the same dinner tables. And you know, everyone was taking place home. But I was the only kid sitting at the table with beads and braids in my hair speaking Spanglish. When, when I, I first came, came to DC, I was asked where I was from by everybody. 
it must have been apparent I wasn't from the capital. From my childish Gambino and skating to my skinny jeans and Vans, I didn't fit. I had to make my own room, put pieces of the places I had been together to form the picture of who I really am. When, when I, I first, first came, came to, to DC, the only thing I knew about black culture was Martin Luther King Day. I felt lied to. The Seattle schools tried to cover up my rich history. While in DC, the only thing people like to cover up was their hair. I decided to twist and lock mine. The pride people had of their roots made me want to show that off too. But, but DC, DC taught me, one, mumble sauce is like the missing Waldo to non-Washingtonians. Two, throwing insults at one another, also known as joning, joning is a way of bonding. Three, Three, Washington isn't vanilla bean, but actually hot chocolate with mini marshmallows. Four, Four that jaywalking is a life lesson. lesson. Watch, for the sh watch for the cars instead of the street signs because you can't depend on the government for your safety. Five, Five blue, blue can, can no longer, longer be my favorite color, color because boys in blue turn black men into red memories. Six, Six good, good food, food and convenience make carryouts to die for. for. Seven, DC is the heart that moves this nation that pulses with creativity. Eight, Eight Melting pots are made to cook up unity, but not everyone adds flavor. Nine. Nine, it's shaped like a diamond because its value is measured by its appearance. 10, you, you can't, can't find any, any other place, place in the world, world like it. Not Seattle. Not Atlanta. Not even Virginia. So, so if, if you, you ask, ask me where I'm from, I say DC. <laughs> Wow, folks. Was I right or was I right? Did you just have an incredible two hours? Just making sure I wasn't the only one here. Let's finish off the logistic things. Judges, give me your scores. So, from, an, from low to high, we have a 9.1. We have a 9.2, a 9.3, a 9.3, and a 9.4. But please make some noise for the poet. Poets. And make some noise for every single poet who's touched the stage. Keep making some noise for DJ Double A1K. Make some noise for yourself for looking so fly. And, and scene. Now, while our incredible, uh, our incredible bout manager manages, tabulates, does all the math, I have the esteemed pleasure of welcoming, you know, our, our favorite, our favorite, our favorite, our favorite poetry mother, um, an incredible, an incredible, an incredible CEO, director, and one of the main reasons why we are all here in this space, a lover of poetry and justice, my friend and yours. Make some noise for Sarah Browning of Split This Rock! Cozy done, everybody! Look at your beautiful selves. Turn around and look at yourselves. You are beautiful. We are building America right here. We are repairing America right here. You've been hearing just how profoundly broken our country is, just how profoundly broken our world is. How are we gonna put it back together? Words. Words, language, and these young voices. So I want you to do three things. Who lives in, the D Who lives in Washington, D.C.? All right, so you all don't have voting representation in Congress, right? No, but we have council members. The DC City Council, I want you to go home tomorrow and call your DC council member and say, increase support for the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Increase support for our community programs like Split This Rock. All right, now, you live in Virginia or Maryland? Or someone not D somewhere not D.C.? Y'all have representation in Congress. I want you to go home tomorrow and call your member of Congress and say, support the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs> All right, so anybody who tells you that we can't afford art, tell them every American pays about the cost of a pack of gum for the National Endowment for the Arts every year. And that supports programs like Split This Rock. Okay, the third thing you can do, go to splitthisrock.org and look at all the ways that you can support these incredible programs and these incredible young people who are the future of our nation, the future leaders. They're putting it back together again with their power and their beauty and all of you. Thank you so much. I bring you Joseph Green, Youth Programs Coordinator, Split This Rock. 
Can I have every young person that touched the stage up in this front area right here? Every young person that came up on the stage right here. All right. Before we get into the whole who won and not, there's something that we do every year at LTAB where we like to honor one of the members of our community um, who has shown the spirit of the slam. Now this could be a young person, this could be a teacher, this could be a coach or a sponsor. Um, just real quick, I want to bring to the stage one of the most dedicated sponsors I've seen, and I've seen some really dedicated ones. This is only her second year, and every event, not only were her young people there, but she was there with them, helping them get there, tell them how to ride the Metro. Uh, they have practices almost twice a week. She runs the newspaper, the yearbook, and the SLAM team at Wakefield High School. Can we please give a round of applause for Amy Walton, the Spirit of the SLAM Award winner. It comes with a nice flyer and a $50 gift card that I'll give you later. Thank you so much. All right. <clears throat> and before we get into this winning, we've been giving rounds of applause this whole time. You guys have been wonderful. It is imperative that before we call any of first, second, third, or fourth, that you give all of these young people and their bravery and their courage and their spirit a standing ovation because this is the future. It's right here. In fourth place, from Cesar Chavez, Capitol Hill, Controverse. In third place, McKinley Tech. In second place, from Winston Churchill High School, Live Poet Society. Drum roll, drum roll. Somebody give me a drum roll, thank you. Which means in first place, please put your hands together for Wilson High School! I could do this all day, I could do this all night, all month. Once again, a shout out to everybody at the Kennedy Center that made this possible. The crew in the back, the crew back here, Jeanette, everybody with the Millennium State staff, thank you so very much. Have a good night, get home safe. The capital gain. I ain't asking for change. I'm good at pointing the phrase. What I want is more than ever and never to fade away. Is that too much to ask? Good, cause I ain't asking. Already into action, I had your answer retracted. So stay about my business is crowded enough with me. You added it, it's just a witness I'd rather not even see. I'm good. Take me to the truth.